Good evening and welcome. Disaster has struck the United States with New York and Washington reeling under a series of terrorist attacks. Thousands are believed dead and injured. Both the two towers of the World Trade Center in New York have been destroyed. In Washington, part of the Pentagon has been wiped out. The Capitol has been damaged as well as the State Department. Three hijacked planes were used in the attacks. A fourth one has crashed near Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. It all began just before 3 o'clock South African time this afternoon, 9 a.m. in America. A Boeing 767 slammed into the northern tower of the World Trade Center. About 18 minutes after the first crash, with the world's cameras trained on the billowing smoke, another plane deliberately slammed into the southern tower. It was only then that the United States began realizing that it was facing a terrorist attack. The FBI announced that the passenger plane, which had first smashed into the northern tower, had been hijacked en route from Boston to L.A. The second plane had been hijacked en route from Washington to L.A. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. The next attack came in Washington. Another hijacked plane crashed into the Pentagon. At about the same time in New York, there was an explosion in the southern tower of the World Trade Center. It collapsed completely. reeling from one attack to another, all flights over the U.S. were grounded and all airports were closed. The United Nations in New York was evacuated, as well as all government buildings in Washington, including the White House. Then another hijacked plane hit Capitol Hill in Washington. A quarter of an hour later in New York, the northern tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. Five minutes later, a car bomb exploded at the State Department in Washington. Then the Pentagon partially collapsed. News then came in that a fourth hijacked passenger plane en route from New Jersey to San Francisco had crashed near Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. Nobody knows just how many thousands have died. 50,000 people worked in the World Trade Center alone. In the space of two hours, Washington and New York were left reeling. World leaders united to condemn the attacks. All flights from Europe to the United States were suspended as European leaders expressed shock at the daring assault on the U.S. British Prime Minister Tony Blair said he was shocked. This mass terrorism is the new evil in our world today. It is perpetrated by fanatics who are utterly indifferent to the sanctity of human life. German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder said the German people stood by the United States at this difficult hour. There was mixed reaction in the Middle East. Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat condemned the attacks. We are completely shocked. Completely shocked. Unbelievable. And Afghanistan's ruling Taliban movement said Saudi dissident Osama bin Laden was not responsible for the attacks on the U.S. But in the West Bank, Gaza Strip and refugee camps in Lebanon, there were celebrations. Palestinian gunmen fired into the air and shopkeepers handed out sweetmeats to passers-by. America's closest ally in the region, Israel, condemned the attacks and offered to send troops in to help in rescue efforts. The South African government says it's ready to offer the United States any humanitarian support within the country's means following the terrorist attacks in New York and Washington. President Thabo Mbeki said from Harare that the South African government joins the world in denouncing these senseless and horrific terrorist attacks. He called on the international community to defeat global terrorism. The American consulate in Kilani, Johannesburg, was assessing the situation from afar. The U.S. consulate spokesperson Catherine Jazenka was visibly upset when the SABC approached her for comment. She says she's unsure whether or not the consulate will open tomorrow. Consul officials are monitoring the situation through the electronic media and their own communication channels. Security around the consulate in Kilani was tightened this evening. 
Private security personnel are ensuring that there are no suspicious cars parked near the consulate. They say police service car patrols are also driving around the consulate's perimeter. Tzinka would not discuss security details. There was no further comment from the consulate. We now cross live to Leighton Beard, who's at the American co uh, Embassy in Pretoria. Leighton, has there been any word from the American Embassy here? Mahendra, at this stage, the American Embassy is saying that it will not comment on the matter. Uh, any comment will come from the Washington State Department. Uh, but officials here at the American Embassy are in a meeting to discuss the security situation, and they say they will make a statement later tonight on what their plans are, on whether they plan to open the embassy tomorrow or not, or whether they, they plan to have limited... Uh, uh, services to the public tomorrow, but at this stage, uh, no other news besides that. What's the political reaction in Pretoria? Well, the reaction from the Department of Foreign Affairs obviously has been uh, one of concern and one of condemnation. The Department of Foreign Affairs says that it will be in touch with its missions in New York and Washington, and based on the information that it gets from them, it will make a more detailed statement sometime tomorrow. Thank you, Leighton. That was Leighton Beard reporting live from Pretoria. Welcome back. We now cross live to our correspondent in Washington, Simon Marks. Simon, how much is the attack on the Pentagon a symbolic gesture? Well, I think a symbolic gesture in every sense, really, and forgive the rather primitive communications, as you can imagine, here in Washington and in New York, communications are at a premium at the moment, so that's why we've got the telephone here. Uh, the situation, I think, really is that this has been a symbolic attack both on the financial and governmental heart of the United States. Uh, two of the most significant symbols of U.S. power, both financial and governmental, the World Trade Center in New York and the Pentagon here in Washington, D.C. And really what this attack has succeeded in doing uh, is undercutting that sense of security that Americans have traditionally had. This is not a nation in any sense that is used to outbreaks of domestic terrorism. We saw that in the reaction uh, to the blast at Oklahoma City. We saw it in the reaction to the blast previously at the World Trade Center. But we have never seen a train of events like the ones that have unfolded here uh, over the course of the last five and six hours, a, a train of events that really does make people all over this enormous country uh, extremely frightened and extremely anxious. Nobody knows whether the attacks have ended, whether there's more to come. President Bush, you probably saw a little bit earlier on the broadcast, speaking at an Air Force base in Louisiana. We assume he's coming back to Washington. We assume that he'll go to the White House, but that's not guaranteed either. The U.S. government then trying to put out publicly uh, a message of confidence and uh, President Bush trying to assure the public that he is in control and that his team around him is secure, but nevertheless, a lot of questions remain open at this point uh, about the U.S. response to this disaster. Let me just give you one little piece of news that I know some people there might be waiting to hear. We've spoken to the South African Embassy here in Washington, D.C. I am assured that all South African Embassy personnel in Washington and New York are safe and secure. We're still waiting to find out whether President Mbeki will go ahead uh, with a visit to the United States that was due to begin this Saturday. That visit for the United Nations Conference on Children that was due to take place in New York starting next Tuesday. My assumption is that that conference will now be cancelled because the notion that the New York Security Services would be in a position to provide security to 75 heads of state, including President Mbeki, I think is now extremely doubtful. So the country really beginning to react to this news. It's still early here, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You go out on the streets of Washington here, there's an eerie silence. People have been sent home. People are going to their supermarkets to shop up on produce and supplies. Uh, and people across the country staring at television screens, Times Square in New York, full of people looking at billboards, trying to find out exactly what's happened and preparing a response. We're also hearing some pretty intemperate remarks, it has to be said, although understandable under the circumstances, from some senior members of Congress now openly blaming Osama bin Laden for this attack. And in the words of one senior Republican vowing, and excuse me for using this language, to hunt the bastards down. So the United States response to this only beginning to take shape. Simon, we understand that the president was in Air Force One. Was this a security measure? Well, he was on Air Force One because he was actually in Florida uh, and uh, cut short his visit to Florida, got on board Air Force One and headed back to Washington, D.C. At least that was the plan. 
to handle the crisis. He then landed at an Air Force base in Louisiana where he made his statement uh, promising that uh, the resolve of the American nation was being tested. Make no mistake, he said, this is a test that we will pass. This is a very, very difficult day for President Bush. Remember, this man has only been in office for nine months. Politically, he's in his infancy in the presidency. He's surrounded by people like uh, Vice President Dick Cheney, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld, National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice, who politically are relatively hawkish. So I think that the impulse of the United States politically is going to be to hit back and hit back very hard in the aftermath of these attacks once anybody can establish exactly who was responsible because the task of combing through all that rubble uh, at the World Trade Center in New York uh, and going through the offices at the Pentagon, which remain ablaze at this hour, and trying to find out exactly who hijacked, it would seem, up to four commercial airliners, crashing them into the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, uh, a site in Pennsylvania, we understand, the scene of the fourth attack. Uh, all of those issues are just going to be enormously complex uh, to start to unravel. Huge questions, of course, about internal security. How did anybody, let alone four sets of people, manage to take over those airplanes? So this is a very, very early days in this story. And uh, the United States, I've got to tell you, is very scared tonight. And quickly, Simon, what's the feeling on the street? Well, I think the feeling on the street is uh, we never in our wildest dreams imagined that this could happen here. When you see the World Trade Center, an internationally known landmark, the symbol of U.S. financial power, not just on fire, but ultimately collapsing to the ground, toppling to the ground, that frightens Americans to their marrow. And one must assume that this is what these attacks were designed to do. It's going to lead to a very interesting series of policy questions here about how the U.S. responds, forcing the debate really to focus on how you try to protect the country against terror domestically, rather perhaps than on the nuclear missiles of rogue states like North Korea. The policy conversations are just beginning. Thank you very much indeed. That was our Washington correspondent, Simon Marks. Tonight, America has closed its airports and borders to the rest of the world. Two flights from Johannesburg, SA-201 and SA-211, have been suspended until further notice, and security at the airport is to be stepped up. Earlier, our reporter Donald Chaoke spoke to the people at the airport. No, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not really sure what totally is, is happening. I, I don't know what, 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 who's retaliating against us. This is something that's not supposed to happen. For us, and I think for the world, we've always looked at... Um, United States as being the safest place. It's, it's just a horrible sight, and it's, it's, it's a horrible day. The United States wears revenge. This will be a monumental struggle of good versus evil, but good will prevail. And here, South Africans mourn. Lighten the candles in sympathy of the people who have died in America. I'm feeling very sad about them. Good evening. Welcome to the News at 8. I'm Hasina Katrada. The United States has declared war on the terrorists who launch suicide flights at key centers of U.S. power. President George W. Bush has called it an act of war. And Secretary of State Colin Powell says America's response will take many forms, including military, military retaliation. In other developments, German, British, French and Israeli secret services have linked the attacks to Osama bin Laden, an extremist living under the protection of the Taliban government in Afghanistan. Police in Massachusetts have identified five Arabs as suspects. One of the men was a trained pilot. Authorities in Florida have searched unidentified properties in Brawford County. The U.S. military has been placed on a worldwide alert and National Guard troops have arrived in New York City. Reality is sinking in. The Manhattan skyline has changed forever and frantic efforts to rescue survivors are underway as intelligence services pull out all the stops to bring to book those responsible for the worst attack in the history of the U.S. Hours after the attacks, the scenes continue to defy description. Nine people have been pulled out of the wreckage of the World Trade Center so far. There are still signs of life in the rubble. A one person has been sending out calls on a cell phone. There is still no death toll from the attacks. In 
which knife-wielding hijackers commandeered four planes. It could be weeks before the final number is known. Many firefighters and police officers who put themselves in danger to save citizens have paid the ultimate price. As many as 265 firefighters and 85 police are missing, presumed dead. Americans have jammed donation centers to give blood. A temporary morgue has been set up at a popular Manhattan sports center. For many Americans, the events of the past 24 hours are still hard to take in. Very solemn. I, my heart is just heavy. I feel, I just feel hurt, personally hurt. Well, of course, I feel terrible for what happened to the country. Um, I just hope we respond quickly. I think there should be a military response. The Pentagon was evacuated for the second time. Earlier today, people returned to work. As many as 800 are feared dead, but officials are refusing to confirm or deny the reports. Intelligence agencies continue to search for those responsible. Military retaliation has not been ruled out. I fully understand uh, the, uh, the views of the American people this morning. We're mad. We were assaulted. Uh, but our spirit wasn't assaulted, and our fighting spirit was not assaulted, so we want to respond. You don't attack America like, America like this and get away with it. In an address to the nation, President George W. Bush promised to find and punish those responsible. The deliberate and deadly attacks which were carried out yesterday against our country were more than acts of terror. They were acts of war. This will require our country to unite in steadfast determination and resolve. Freedom and democracy are under attack. The American people need to know we're facing a different enemy than we have ever faced. Several people have been arrested in Boston and Florida. Investigators in Boston have reportedly found a videotape on how to fly commercial jets, a fuel consumption calculator, and a copy of the Quran in suitcases at Logan Airport. The Boston Globe newspaper says the cases belong to a man with an Arabic name. Investigators believe he could be among those who hijacked the plane and crashed it into the WTC. He boarded Flight 11 after flying into Boston's Logan International Airport from Portland, Maine, but his bags missed the connection. A number of countries believe Osama bin Laden is a man behind the attacks. The Taliban ambassador to Pakistan says Afghanistan will consider extraditing bin Laden if proof is presented against him. The attacks have turned the U.S. upside down and have left the world's superpower with physical and emotional scars. As the dust settles, one name keeps emerging, that of Saudi millionaire and Islamic extremist Osama bin Laden. An act of war compared to Pearl Harbor, even before the symbols of America's commercial might crumbled into dust. The death toll will be higher in New York and Washington than it was in Hawaii 60 years ago. In the aftermath, the talk is the same, war. But against who? The first person that was accused was Bin Laden. It was only soon thereafter that they discovered that it was one of them. It was a domestic terrorist, not an international terrorist. So therefore, we have to be very careful whether we accuse a person or not. The organization, the precision, the destruction, the denial, set by U.S. officials to be the trademarks of Osama bin Laden. Bin Laden has been accused of numerous attacks against American interests. Living in Afghanistan as a guest of the ruling Taliban, he is wanted in the U.S. for the 1998 bomb attacks on the embassies in Tanzania and Kenya. He is also suspected of being behind last year's bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen and has been linked to the deaths of American soldiers in Somalia in the early 1990s. It means bin Laden is ranked the most hated man in America, a league that at varying times has been topped by the likes of Muammar Gaddafi, Saddam Hussein and Timothy McVeigh. I guess while we don't know whether it's bin Laden or someone else, that it is more useful to focus on individuals than to get into the trap of thinking that this was an attack by a group, whether it's Islamic or radical Christian or Middle East or from anywhere. It should be focused on individuals who are guilty of this criminal act and they should be brought to justice.
Like Saddam Hussein, bin Laden was once a favored son of the U.S., receiving U.S. military support to fight the Soviet occupying force in Afghanistan. Whomever is responsible, America is exposed as military vulnerable. There's an old saying that you, you, the armies tend to prepare for the last war, and in this uh, amorphous world of un, undefined world of terrorism, uh, traditional military hardware is of very little utility, and one can wonder about the impact of this event on the planning for, say, a missile defense system, which is very expensive and goes after a particular threat, but would be irrelevant against the kind of threat which has just killed thousands and thousands of innocent people. The rules changed this week, and America did not have a game plan. Guy Oliver, SABC, Johannesburg. And for the latest from New York, we cross to our correspondent, Nathan King. Good evening, Nathan. You're in New York. What are rescue crews there doing at this moment? Well, it's a rescue and recovery operation. I mentioned the word rescue because, as you said in your lead up there, there despite the pictures that we saw all over the world uh, this time yesterday, there still are survivors under that rubble. We know that two were found overnight. We also know that police are currently in contact with one and have a good chance of pulling them out. Uh, we also understand that five firefighters may have been found alive and well have now been transferred to hospital, although we have to confirm that. But that number is very difficult to compare to the thousands or still trapped uh, underneath that rubble. We have uh, 41 officially dead, but of course, as Mayor Giuliani said, there's countless thousands more to count through. And as the hours go on, we're well aware that uh, the chance of finding more people surviving uh, is getting slimmer by the hour. Nathan, how dangerous is the rescue operation now? Sorry, could you repeat that? How dangerous is the rescue operation at this moment? Uh, we're still getting smoke coming from what was the World Trade Center. Remember, there's 200,000 tons of steel in each one of those towers, plus the concrete as well, and there's still smoke. Uh, down in that area. A lot of the steel is still white hot and of course that's not even taking into account the precarious nature of the actual structure. Some of those buildings down uh, towards Wall Street and the World, Tra uh, World Trade Center are built in the 19th century so they're very unstable indeed. Uh, they're having to, to basically support a lot of buildings. There's even talk of having uh, controlled explosions in some buildings over the days and weeks to come uh, in order to make it safe. Uh, to uh, get out the bodies. Nathan, very quickly, can you tell us what happens now? Well, what happens now is America needs help. We know that the South African police force has offered a, te a team of between 30 and 50. Remember, South African police force were used to great effect in the earthquake in Istanbul, uh, Turkey. The problem is getting them here, of course, because we've got no flights coming in or out of the country. A lot of other countries are also offering help because it's long, laborious work, and they're just trying to get as many people out as there as possible in the search for survivors. Nathan King, thank you very much for joining us live from New York. Palestinian President Yasser Arafat has been donating blood for the victims of the terror attacks in New York and Washington. Other Palestinians held a vigil in Jerusalem in sympathy with the United States. Dozens of Palestinian men, women and children gathered in front of the U.S. consulate in East Jerusalem, lighting candles and laying wreaths. Some carried placards which read, Terror is our common enemy, and we are victims too. Last night, some in the West Bank city of Nablus and Arab East Jerusalem rejoiced publicly after the hijacked plane slammed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. But Arafat has condemned the attacks as a terrible act. Meanwhile, Israeli troops killed nine Palestinians in the West Bank town of Jenin. The fighting was part of a second night of an Israeli army operation to stop suicide bombers entering Israel. As the United States increases security at all its foreign missions, including those in South Africa, yesterday's attacks have been condemned by the international community. The United Nations has begun withdrawing its 80 expatriate staff from Afghanistan, but it says the pullout is temporary. And some 6,000 office workers from Kuala Lumpur's 88-story Petronas Twin Towers, the world's tallest buildings, were evacuated in a bomb scare. Office workers and shoppers were only allowed back into the buildings once they were given the all-clear. 
British police also had their hands full when they had to clear journalists from Downing Street, where Prime Minister Tony Blair was holding crisis talks on yesterday's attacks. But it was only a false alarm. European Union foreign ministers also opened an emergency meeting today. This is uh, an act of solidarity of uh, the European Union and NATO standing together at a day of profound tragedy. German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder said Germany would stand by the United States and Japan called the assault a threat to all democracies. China expressed its sympathy and also condemned terrorism. It's been a day of fast-moving politics in the United States. Our correspondent Simon Marx is in Washington, D.C. Good evening, Simon. We heard it's believed that the men who smashed into the World Trade Center and the Pentagon had recently received flying instruction at a school in Central Florida. Can you tell us more? That is my understanding. There are two significant breaking news developments to bring you tonight. The first, credible reports that we're hearing from sources close to the FBI that a massive FBI operation is now underway in Florida after the FBI received information that some of the men who may have been involved in the hijacking may have taken lessons either at some kind of flying school or at some kind of aeronautical university uh, in Daytona Beach, Florida. So a massive FBI presence uh, is now in Florida trying to follow up those leads. I'm also being told by senior and trusted sources at the State Department here in Washington now that the State Department has credible intelligence that suggests that these, in their words, were just the first four in a series of attacks that are planned against U.S. government, financial, and civilian targets. Enormous concerns at the State Department now that there could be further attacks being planned, which only underscores the climate of fear and insecurity that is really enveloping not just this city and New York, but the entire country. Back to you in Johannesburg. Simon Marks, thank you for joining us live from Washington. Welcome back. Back home from Zimbabwe, President Thabo Mbeki today reiterated South Africa's condemnation of the terror attacks. Mbeki spoke at the opening of a municipal police training facility in Philippi, Cape Town. A lighter note at a time of heavy world politics. But the events that shook the world this last 24 hours were never far from the president's mind. Since yesterday, he's been in constant contact with his security advisors. We are confident that those responsible for the crimes committed yesterday will be brought to book. We stand ready to extend such humanitarian assistance as we may be requested to extend. This is the least we can do. The events also found their way into Parliament. The Democratic Alliance challenged the Deputy President to explain South Africa's position, suggesting the government's support of the Palestinian cause at the Racism Conference may have compromised it. Is it with the United States, with the... Uh, with Bra uh, Britain, with France, with Germany, with the EU, with the European Union, with Japan on this issue, and the free world. We condemn that without any, any hesitation. And we are part of the world that is saying the perpetrators of this must be found, and they must, first, must face the weight of the law. That's an issue. I don't want you to confuse our stand on the issues relating to the conference. And the deputy president stood by the government's criticism of the U.S.'s decision to withdraw from the racism conference. Even the president stayed clear of the issue, standing firm in his condemnation of international terrorism. President Becky is scheduled to visit the United States next week to speak before the U.N.'s General Assembly and the Summit on Children. The visit, however, hangs in the balance. It will only go ahead if the security situation on the ground allows it. Renal Fonsal, SABC, Philippi. Security at airports around South Africa has been stepped up following the attacks. Meanwhile, prayer services have been held in Santon, Johannesburg and Cape Town in support of the American people. People in Cape Town from all walks of life, including religious and political leaders, stood side by side to express shock and sympathy for the people of America. The prayer service was called by the Anglican Archbishop of Cape Town, Jongonkulu Ndungane. 
We are all being traumatized by the events of yesterday, and uh, our hearts uh, go out to those who have lost loved ones, to all those who have been affected uh, by the events of yesterday. Leaders from across the political spectrum who attended the service also condemned the attacks. Meanwhile, police in Cape Town responded to several bomb scares in various parts of the city throughout the day. U.S. consulates in Cape Town and Durban remained closed today, while in Pretoria and Johannesburg, they opened only for essential services for American citizens. Transport Minister Dala Omar says the airport's company has taken immediate steps to boost security at South African airports following the terror attacks in the United States. Omar said the Civil Aviation Authority was also monitoring the situation closely. He also told a media briefing in Parliament that he was confident that the South African Airways had sufficient security on its flights.